Hey guys, what's up? Red Raven here, and this is the Blue Complete Comprehensive Guide um, that where I'm going to show you absolutely everything I can about this synthesizer, and I'm going to show you all the tricks and tips and and all that stuff that I use with this synthesizer to make the sounds that I do from pads to arps to basses to whatever it may be. And this video, I'm going to cover how to use the oscillators to their absolute max without using any of the filters or anything like that. So I'll be covering um, oscillator choice, being uh, which waveforms you choose, wave shaping and phase distortion, uh, detuning the oscillators, uh, volume envelopes, things like that. Um, algorithm choice within blue because you know you can use FM and RM synthesis if you choose the correct algorithm and that can get you some pretty interesting results so the first thing I'm gonna tell you is to go to the blank bank or clear out your preset whichever one you're on you can either class press this clear button or you can scroll through your banks with the up and down arrow underneath your bank uh, selection and choose blank bank so it will default blue out so that you have one oscillator being a sine wave active routed through to effects a which will be empty using algorithm number one now for this tutorial we're going to use algorithm number one because that uses subtractive synthesis only there's no FM or RM because there's no oscillators routed to any other um, oscillators <clears throat> now the first thing I want to talk about is the oscillators themselves and what each of these uh, boxes and knobs in them do okay so at the top of, of blue you obviously can tell that there is six oscillators that you have to work with and they all are exactly the same except A and B have an additional feature pulse width modulation okay so I'm gonna go ahead and cover them and first thing you'll notice is at the top there is a box A B C D E and F and if you click it it either highlights or, or turns off and that's how you turn that oscillator on and off so that it's either active or unactive okay so we're gonna use oscillator A for now and to the right of that you'll notice there's a box that has um, sign written in it if you click that you'll get a drop down menu where it will say analog additive or spectral if you hover over either of those you get an additional drop down menu that will show you the waveform options for each of those categories of waveforms okay you have a very selection of waveforms to choose from within blue and all six oscillators have the same waveforms to choose from you can either select a waveform by the drop down menu or you can scroll through them by hovering over the box and using the plus and minus buttons located on either side of the waveform name directly underneath that you'll find a box that says free and then to the right of that INV and again to the right TRK Starting at the left, the free is the phase reset, and if you highlight that, the phase of that particular oscillator will not reset when you press a new key. Generally, when you press a different key or you let off a key and press the same one, the phase of that oscillator resets, and if you do not want it to do that to stop, um, like let's say you have a respace going, and you want the phase to pick up right where you left off so that the sound flows a little better and it, it just sounds better, you would want to highlight the free button so that the phase does not reset each time you press a key. Okay, the INV stands for phase invert, so you can flip the uh, phase of that particular oscillator. So if your sound is having some phase cancellation problems, you can highlight that box to invert the phase, and that can help take care of some of those problems. Okay, to the right of that, the TRK, which will be by default highlighted on all six oscillators, stands for key tracking. And what that does is it tracks the pitch of that particular oscillator to the MIDI note that you press or program within your sequencer. If you do not have that highlighted, it will play whatever pitch is determined with your ratio, semi, and fine options. Okay. Now, all five, all, all of the oscillators except oscillator A, so B through F, have a box directly under that and to the left that says mode. And if you click it, it goes to sync A. And if you click it again, it goes back to what it default says normal. And that is how you choose between um, FM and RM if you're using an algorithm that has that option. So if we go ahead and, and scroll to, to algorithm two here, 
and you see that oscillator C is now being routed through oscillator F before it goes to the output. So if we look at our oscillators, the destination box for oscillator C now says arrow towards S oscillator F. And if we look at oscillator F, the mode box now has FM in it instead of normal. If you click it, it will say ring, which stands for RM synthesis or ring modulation. If you click it one more time, the sync to A comes back, and then if you click it again, it goes back to FM. All right, so that's how you dictate if you're using FM, RM, or subtractive synthesis within Blue. So we're going to go ahead and go back to the default algorithm, which is number one here. And to the right of the mode box, you'll see the one that says shape underneath it, and by default, all six will have PD in it, stands for phase distortion. If you click it, it goes to WS, which stands for wave shaping. And that is in relation to these knobs here, shape and feed, and which also is connected to the PD slash WS tab located on the bottom half of blue. All right. So what that does is allow you to use phase distortion or wave shaping on, on each oscillator individually. All right. So underneath that, to the left, you'll have a box that says ratio. And if you click it, you get a bunch of different numbers that pop up. Now, if you use 0.5, that will drop it down an octave. And if you use 2, that will raise it an octave. And there's quite a few that you can choose from here. And I only use even numbers just because that's how I work. But I would have to assume that these decimals would be frequencies that are harmonics that would work well, I suppose. I'm not real sure on that. I haven't really looked into that too much, but I just use it to drop it an octave or raise it an octave if my semi knob is just not giving me enough range or if I want to do it a little quicker or easier. To the right of that you have your destination box and this is what allows you to choose where that particular oscillator is being routed within the um, other features of blue. So if you click that you'll see that you have the option for dry, filter A, filter B, filter A plus B, effects A, effects B, and effects A plus B. Now what this does is you can route it through to filter A only or filter B only or filter A and B at the same time or effects A and B uh, by themselves or both at the same time or you can route this oscillator dry skipping all the filters and effects and just coming out clean output. Okay. So underneath that you have your tuning options for your semitones and synths being semi and fine. Now just a quick note here, uh, the semitone is directly related to the keys on your keyboard. There are 12 keys in an octave, which is why 12 semitones equals one full octave. So if you pressed a C5 and you had your semitones at plus zero steps is what it will say in blue. So if you just had it defaulted to the center position and you pressed a C5, that oscillator would play a C5. If you had the semitone turned up one step or one semitone and you pressed a C5, it would then be playing a C sharp, otherwise known as a D flat, because a semitone is one key up on the keyboard, including the flats and sharps, uh, or the black keys on your keyboard if you don't know what a flat or a sharp is. Okay, the sense, I'm not real sure of the relation to semitones. I haven't studied into that enough, but you can use that at your own will to get some slight detuning and fatter sounds. Okay, Directly under that you have your wave shaping phase distortion amount knob which is dictated by shape underneath it. To the right of that you see feed which would be feedback for your wave shaping and phase distortion. Okay, And to the right of that you have your velocity which would be the minimum volume that your lowest velocity would play and your overall total volume. Now oscillators A and B have an additional feature, pulse width modulation, which uses this knob here and the symmetry knob, which is to the right of it. And the PWM knob or pulse width modulation knob it dictates how much uh, this oscillator is uh, being affected by pulse width modulation. And the symmetry dictates the starting point uh, of the waveform, which you know you can get different results with. So you could turn like a square wave into a pulse wave things like that using the symmetry knob and not even having to touch the pulse width modulation. You could just, like I'll demonstrate, if I go to a square wave here and play it, I'll turn the volume up for you here. Okay, that's obviously a square wave. Now if I turn it all the way to the right, it'll sound like a pulse. So you can get different oscillator sounds just by messing with the symmetry of that particular oscillator 
but remember only oscillators A and B have this option, so use it wisely. Okay? Now, um, I'll come back in the second video here and show you how you use those and volume envelopes to create a nice sound using only the oscillators and volume envelopes that come with them. Alright? So this is Red Raven, peace and out. See you in the next video.